All right, gentlemen, take your seats. Let's get this over before lunch. Flight Rose of the Homicide Squad has decided to take early retirement. We will all miss Floyd and the steely edge he brought to his police work. The department has arranged a wee drink at the Galway Arms to quench the mighty thirst a man gets from 25 years of police work. Floyd's departure leaves a place at the top table, and the chief has seen fit to promote cold felt from burglary to the homicide desk. Stand up, Phelps. Take a chair. You're in the major leagues now, Sonny. Rusty Galloway, a fine lawman of the old school, will be taking you under his wing. Your first case is the murder of a woman, found last night and bearing all the signs of the werewolf. Get out to the scene, lads. That bum took a swipe and put him down in my sack. Do you have the address? It's been all over KGPL. Tell it's me off Stroll. Temple Street. Springer Bell Glendale. He reads a few too You can drive. Make the chief the stirrup, you in trouble. What happened to Rose? Parker wants the chief's job. Word is it's either going to be him or Thad Green. So they're both clearing the decks. So where does that leave you, Galloway? How about a scoop for the examiner, Galloway? You could use some good press. Another tramp, another message. Is the werewolf back in business, boys? Do you have a mother, asshole? A sister? How about showing some respect for this poor woman? Let us do our job, and Detective Galloway will give you a statement later. He's good, Rusty. He even sounds genuine. That's Phelps, guys. The war hero. Defending the honor of murdered humps. They're used to it, Phelps. Moving along, guys. You got your pictures, you got your headlines. Now scram. Roman, this your beat? Yes, sir. Well, part of it. Kids park here, they use it like a lover's lane. It's a working neighborhood. Some trouble, but nothing like this. It's uh, known locally as the Moors. You were first on the scene? Yes, Detective. No one's disturbed the body? No, sir. We cleared out them vulture reporters so Pinker and the coroner could work. They're waiting to talk to you. What can you tell me about the shoe prints? Men's size eights. Pinker lifted impressions for me to compare back at the lab. Cause of death? Could be the head injuries. She has been badly stomped. Hmm. Interesting. What about this wound on the finger? Something removed. A ring, most likely. I assume it was taken post-mortem. What caused the blunt force injury to the face? Could be anything from a baseball bat to a lug wrench. I'll have more details after the autopsy. What's the writing on the victim mean? BD, like Dahlia, Tex, 
Your guess is as good as mine. Could be something to it, or it could be the killers trying to throw you off the scent. Either way, I'll run tests on the lipstick. Any idea of the time of death? From the temperature, I'd say after midnight. I'll confirm with you later. The victim's bag? Looks brand new. Can't be the one used on the body. Looks like some kind of puzzle or parlor game. Bomba Club. Why steal a table lighter? Can we get to the Bomba? Man could die of thirst in a case like this. Find anything interesting? You know the way. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? The werewolf? For my money, a copycat. We can't rule it out. We need to work the evidence. You'd love that, wouldn't you? A big head to hang on your wall. The caller of the decade. You've been working evidence on BD case for six months and got next. There's a difference, Rusty. Oh, yeah? I just started working it today. Okay, odd shot. What's more likely? The werewolf comes back around, leaving us a note on the corpse? He clearly has a thing for power. Power over women. Why not power over the police department as well? Let me finish, Phelps. A guy opens his mouth again after six months of stooping. For some opportunist who's been reading about the BD figures, he'll rip off the M.O. and get himself a freebie. That's not totally fantastical. Where's that goddamn place? Gentlemen, what can I get you? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. Were you working here last night? Yes. How can I help, officer? You can start with your name. Garrett Mason. You're the regular bartender on nights? I'm a temporary barman. I work for an agency. I fill in at bars across town. Do you remember a woman who came in here last night? Uh, five feet seven, about 110 pounds, blonde hair. About 40 years of age. You mean Celine Henry? Yes. Do you know anything about her? I don't. But the owner, Mr. McCall, serves her most nights. Would you like to speak to him? I would. He sits at the back of the club. Where's the hibiscus? You can't miss him. Is there anything else? Fire away, Phelps. I'll stay here. I'm a little parched. Pour me three fingers of rye. Detective Phelps, LAPD. We're investigating the murder of Celine Henry. Do you know her? Celine? Oh, Christ. Sure I know her. She and I and Jacob, her husband, we go way back. She was here Are last night? going to pay for that? Sure, she's a regular. Celine is... was a... House officer. Lovely That's woman. Spirit. Funny enough. Was Mrs. Henry here with anyone last night? Not at first. Celine already had quite a head start. But she attracted attention? Certainly. A few gentlemen became very enamored with her and her stories. One guy in particular. You know him? No. He's been in a couple of times. Did they leave together? Yes. At around 11. If it helps, I made the guy's license plate. 
A waitress. Can I have another spoon? I think this could be a great help, sir. Thank you. Mrs. Henry appeared to be missing a ring, torn from her finger, but not her wedding finger. Celine always wore a red garnet ring on the large side. Larger than life, like Celine herself. Did she have it a long time? Sure. Since way back in her flying days. Did her husband buy it for her? No, it was, uh, it was before Jacob. I think you know where the ring came from, and I think you're going to tell me. Okay. I bought it years ago. I carried a torch for Celine in those days. I guess I always have. Her old man never knew about it. You know the husband? Sure I know Jacob. He was in the Corps. He met Celine on a furlough and married her when the war was finished. He put up with a load of shit. Do you think he killed his wife? No. No, not in my opinion. So if it wasn't Jacob, then you probably let her out of here with the guy who killed her. How do you feel about that? Stole the attitude, will you? I tried to get on to Jacob. I rang him up, asked him to come pick her up like usual. But he refused. And she picked some night to push him over the edge. I rang him back around 11.30, but I got no answer. Thanks, Mr. McColl. You've been a big help. One more thing. Would you have an address for Celine? 142 North Union Avenue. God knows I had to send her home in enough cabs to remember that. Sam has taken me to Palm Springs for the weekend. So, uh, how's your tune quick time? Let's get out of here. Hey, what's the hurry? My stool was just starting to warm up nicely. Hey, honey, what time did you get off with? Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? I need a registered owner on a license plate, two boy eight eight nine nine. Yes, Detective. I'll need to contact the DMV. Shall I relay the details via KGPL? Please. Thanks, ma'am. Where's that goddamn waitress? Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? You find the booze helps you get through a working day? Sharpens my investigatory instincts, Phelps. A smart lawyer might use that to throw out anything you collect today. A smart man might know it's unwise to stand between the patient and his medicine. As long as you're not falling over, Rusty, I'll let it slide. <laughs> That's mighty kind of you. You know, you picked the wrong job of a healthy thirst to fend you, We owe it to this city to do the best we can in this position. As homicide detectives, that responsibility is all the more serious. Always the politician. It's not political, it's practical. Maybe the men combing Hollywood Boulevard after the Elizabeth Short murder were more interested in sniffing out booze than the clues that would have led to her killer. Yeah, well, if only you'd been there, choir boy. Betty Short would be alive, the Japs would have spared Pearl Harbor. Our ancestors wouldn't have tasted the forbidden fruit. Minor syntactical error, Detective Galloway. Try the back door. Wait here a second. Thank you. 
Side window's been jimmied. Looks like somebody's creeped the joint. Junk might explain the missing ring. A regular Amelia Earhart per day. The ring looks distinctive. Size nines, above average for a lady. Celine and Jacob are obviously having problems. It speaks to motive. Crime scene evidence still weighs against it being the husband, but Jacob could give us something to go on. One of my exes drank like this, you'd be feeling the back of my hand. Call in burglary and get technical services out here. I'll talk to the neighbors. Don't take all day about it, Phelps. I'll get nasty when I'm thirsty. Burglar used the pry bar. Why did you kick the door in? You think I'm going to climb through a broken window in a $30 suit? You got another thing coming, buster. Galloway, homicide, badge number 564. Requesting technical services for a suspected 459 at 142 North Union. I knew it was. LAPD, are you acquainted with Celine Henry, Miss? Horgan! Jennifer Horgan! I've known Celine for more than 10 years. Our children grew up together. What's going on, officer? Did you see Mrs. Henry go out last night? Well, I'm no busybody, you understand, but Celine had been drinking. And she and poor, long-suffering Jacob had a terrible row. I think Jacob may have given her a black eye. He stormed out and she went back inside. Did he come back? No. Celine was listening to music and shouting until she left around 10 p.m. She was very drunk to have been driving. But she is not the sort of person you can stop from doing something when her dander is up. What is this about, officer? Is Celine all right? I'm afraid Mrs. Henry has been murdered, ma'am. Murdered? Oh, my God. I'm afraid I need to go and then sit down. Let's see what Jacob has to say for himself. I don't think Jacob is our man, but we should see what he has to say. Isn't he the cop who won a medal in solving all the cases? Someone ought to think Jacob him. Henry had a violent argument with his wife last night. He's looking more and more likely. Uh, for my money, the broad keeps the house looking like that, so he probably deserved it. The skipper says bring him in and keep the hacks off our backs for a while. Fine by me. So it ain't the werewolf killer after all. Good to see you've come to your senses, Cole. I always said work the... Okay, Phelps, we go in hard. Follow my lead. Jacob Henry? Yeah. Who's asking? LAPD. You're under arrest for the murder of your wife, Celine Henry. Murder? Celine? Save the dramatic. Oh, oh my for God. RKO, pal. You got bigger problems. What the hell are you talking about? You, you come in here, you, you tell me that Celine is. Take a seat, Mr. Henry. She's... We're going to have a look around, I... then we'll talk. 
Jesus. I'm sorry. I... I get even the slightest hint that you're a flight leader. Size 11s. You think the atmosphere's thick in here? Wait till you try the gas chamber. He'll be back in a moment. Just sit tight. The oldest problem there is, what to do about the old lady. So who could have killed Celine? Where did she go last night, Jacob? A bar, I suppose. Look, I don't know. You know where she went, Jacob. You're lying. Why would I help you if you keep lying to me? Look, I'm telling you, I don't know. We know she went to the Bible Club. The bartender there, he, he calls me if things are getting out of hand, and I go, and I bring her home. He called me last night. I said no. Phone rang a couple more times after that. I ignored it. I'm going to have to live with that. When did you last see your wife, Mr. Henry? Last night. I went to see her. We talked. Things got a little out of hand. I left. You don't remember what time you last saw your wife alive? Look, I'm sorry. I left. Maybe 9 p.m. Might have been a little later, but... Right around nine. Why did you kill her, Jacob? Things will go better if you come clean about it. That's a lousy thing to say. I never gave up on my wife. I don't believe you, Jacob. I think you didn't have the guts to do it yourself, so you had someone else do it. You want to back that up with something, Big Mouth? Huh? The note by the phone suggests you meant her harm. You want the truth? Truth is, I was sick to death of her. I was trying to have her committed. We're still going to need you to come downtown, Mr. Henry. We can get this all down on paper, Jacob. How you got fed up with your wife and how you figured killing her would bury all your troubles. Kill my own wife? She was a lush and a tramp. You... Okay. That's just not being rational. What's this one? in and get a squad car dispatched and check for messages. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. 
Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? I need a patrol unit to transport a suspect back to Central. Certainly, Detective. You have a message from the coroner. Do you wish to be put through? Yes, ma'am. Carruthers. It's Phelps. I've completed the autopsy. Several wounds to the head from a blunt metal instrument. Closest match would be a socket wrench handle. So the cause of death was the blunt... No, the blows to the head, surprisingly, were not fatal. Death was from hemorrhage and shock from the fractured ribs and multiple injuries caused by the stomping. Anything else? He's some kind of sex fiend. The tissues of the anus were bruised about one-eighth of an inch, but no trace of semen in the anus, vagina, or stomach. Thanks, Doc. Operator, give me R and I. Any word on an owner for that vehicle? License was 2Boy8899? Yes, Detective. The plate belongs to a brown 1936 Pontiac. Registered owner is one Alonzo Mendez of 402 South Fremont Street, apartment 16. Thanks. Any other messages? One, Detective. From Captain Donnelly. He wants any and all suspects returned to Central. Interviews to be set up immediately. Got it. We're coming in. You're behind the wheel. Fine. Where are we headed? Carruthers. We have a firm lead, Captain. Are you questioning my judgment, Cole Phelps? No, sir. Good. I thought not. Jacob Henry is a subsister pushed around by his wife. I think with the right kind of persuasion, he might be prepared to seek absolution. Are you prepared to show him the error of his ways, young Phelps? I don't think he's our man. Galloway agrees with me. Don't drag me into this. Rusty is a practical policeman. A bird in hand is always worth two in the bush. Let's liberate a confession from poor Jacob and the public will sleep easier tonight. Run along now, Phelps. I've warmed them up nicely for you. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. Doesn't look good, Jacob. You're in a big jam here. You lie to me and I can't help you out. Do you understand me? Yes. What do you do for work, Jacob? I'm a mechanic. Engines, differentials, transmissions, that kind of stuff. So you have access to tools? Yes, I do. Your wife was brutally beaten with a socket wrench handle, then stomped to death. How do you think that looks, Jacob? I, I was home in bed. You're full of shit, Jacob. The truth is you hated that bitch. You followed her and dragged her into the car and then took her out to the moors. She woke up, and you smashed her face in with a socket wrench. No. No, 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 no. And then you stomped no. her. You stomped her because she's a drunken whore, and she treated you like shit. You stomped her for all the years you had to take it. You stomped her because you are such a weak fucking sister, Jacob, and you wanted to erase all memory of it. Go on. Try to deny it. I was at home. I should have gone to her at the bar, but I didn't. You can't prove I wasn't home. I can. The bar owner, McCall, gave you up. He called your house right at the time that someone was smashing Celine's skull in and got no answer. If we find that socket wrench, you're gonna fry. Get it off your chest. Tell me you killed her. 
I killed her, all right. I killed her dreams. She was an aviator, famous in her day, flying around up there like a bird. But she never wanted to come back down. You know, my pop was a sod farmer, dirt poor. I joined the Corps, trained to be a mechanic. I did better than my father did. I worked hard for it. It's all you can ask of a man. But Celine, she never wanted to come down from the clouds. She wanted everything I couldn't give her. All I had was security. That was never going to be enough. You did it. Everything points to you. What does Tex mean, Jacob? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I need a reason to believe you, Jacob. You want a confession? That's what you want? That's exactly what we want. Seems to me there are two types of marriages. First, where the couple love each other equally and everything's roses. And then there's the other. Or one person loves the other more than life itself and always puts them first. Chumps like me, who love them no matter what, no matter how badly they behave. That's it. That's my confession. I love my wife. And I'll take any test you got to prove it. Your marriage was over. You took her in and she threw it back in your face. You didn't go over there to hurt her. It just got out of hand. It's not how it was. You're lying, Jacob. It was falling apart and things got violent. I'm not lying. I'm telling you how it was. Jenny Horgan says you blackened her eye. It's all right, Jacob. The DA will understand. In your shoes, I would have done exactly the same thing. I hit her, all right? I'm not proud of it, but she was coming at me with a frying pan. What would you do? I took it for years, but sometimes a man can only take so much. Why did you break into your wife's house, Jacob? Why steal the ring? What? What are you talking about? I've got a key. Why would I need to break in? You took the ring because you found out who gave it to her. What are you talking about? Her prized garnet ring given to her by her old boyfriend, Dick McCall. I never knew that. I lived with that woman for three years, and I never knew that. In that case, I think you should be talking to Dick McCall. We'll do the detective work, Lunkhead. Just answer the questions. I'll see what I can do for you, Jacob. But I'm not promising. It still looks bad for you. Phelps, you failed me, son. We have another lead, Captain. This guy Mendez could be our man. I hope so, Phelps. I really hope so. I'm deeply disturbed by your style of police work. We can still pull down a conviction for the skipper if we chase down this Mendez guy. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? Alonzo Mendez. Sound like a man who moonlights as the werewolf. Here, the apartment's up on the top floor.
Don't bother knocking, just kick the door in. Take a look around and see what you can find. Gotta get these to Ray. Size eights could help place Mendez at the scene. Brothers could match the color and brand of the body. Consistent with Celine's injuries and the blood. We have the murder weapon. We better get Pinker down here. Why keep it? Why not throw it away? Think these clowns are geniuses? Thank your stars you caught a break. And Captain Donald will begin to like you. Hey! What gives? LAPD, you're under arrest. Do not lose that son of a bitch. I'll go get our wheels. Mendez, stop right there. You don't need to do this, Alonzo. Get in and drive. Inside his vehicle, and I'll stop the son of a bitch. Hit it. Clean this asshole off the road. Phelps, you gotta get me closer. You're under arrest for the murder of Celine Henry. Give it up, LAPD! 